31st of January, the Long Beach Chamber held an informal networking event at Bricks and Barley here in Long Beach. Seen in attendance were President Brian Hallinan of Dennis Miller's agency, Ian and Mike, the guys from Cybernet, attorneys Joseph Lee and Rena Capacoto, Wade Lucas from ADP, Holly Clinton from Clinton Business Solutions, Bob McDonald from Broward Limousine, realtors Leah Tozer and Adam Butler, among others. A great night of networking was had by all. Long Island NYTV and our Long Beach show, Neighborhoods, are members of the Long Beach Chamber, as well as the Allen Park Chamber. And if you have a business in town, you should be too. This from Hofstra University in honor of Black History Month. Slavery on Long Island came to an end in 1827. New York State had enacted legislation to abolish slavery in 1799. However, emancipation was neither immediate nor universal. Instead, the terms of the statute called for male slaves to be freed when they attained the age of 28, females when they reached 25. This resulted in a gradual emancipation that was not complete until 1827, when the last child born into slavery had reached the age of freedom. Suffrage for African-American Long Islanders was introduced in 1821. The new constitution of the state of New York was enacted in 1821 under, and under its terms, black males who owned $250 in taxable property were eligible to vote. The same constitution granted suffrage to all white males, regardless of property. Females of both races were denied suffrage until the 19th Amendment in 1920. This on the city of Long Beach's comprehensive plan. The Army Corps of Engineers is apparently ahead of schedule and hoping to restart work soon on mitigating the beach side from future storms. The city and local officials have expressed concern that the work might impact our primary beach and business season and have asked that work on the beach be done in the fall and spring seasons. No word yet on the Army Corps' response. What is that work, you ask? Well, this from the comprehensive plan, which can be found at longbeachlistens.com. In the wake of Superstorm Sandy, the city of Long Beach was quick to repair and rebuild previously existing dunes larger than before, replant the east and west end dunes with beach grass and the city will be working with the Army Corps of Engineers to build additional dune protection. The Corps plans to stabilize existing rock groins, which divide the beaches, and infill the beach with elevated berm in front of the boardwalk, providing 100-year flood protection. This berm will complement the existing boardwalk retaining wall, which helps to collect sand and protect the boardwalk from water damage due to storm surges, especially in the form of waves crashing beneath the boardwalk, which was really what caused, or at least the immediate straw that broke the camels or boardwalks back, what caused the boardwalks demise during Sandy. Regarding the bayfront mitigation, this from the comprehensive plan. The city of Long Beach has initiated a $40 million bulkhead and shoreline protection plan which will include citywide bulkhead installation, a city-designed shoreline protection restoration project, which utilizes FEMA hazard mitigation grant funding. This project is designed to enhance protection for critical bayfront utilities and restore the Reynolds Channel shoreline, improvements for critical infrastructure and drainage system enhancements. The city has also reached an agreement with the Army Corps of Engineers to participate in a regionally based reconnaissance study of Reynolds Channel, the back bays, and affected communities. Reimagining the bayfront, developing the Bay Mile, the city is planning future growth and development along the bay via an accessible Bay Mile project based on previous plans of the bayfront esplanade. The Bay Mile concept aims to leverage one of the city's most underutilized assets, the Bayfront, by tying together storm protection, economic development, transportation, mobility, and recreation, recreational opportunities. 
The Bay Mile stretches from the waterfront open space extending east from Washington Boulevard along the waterfront north of West Bay Drive. It extends through that area, through the parks and playing fields of the Long Beach Recreation Center and the sewage treatment plant, all the way to Franklin Boulevard. In these areas, the city can prioritize repitching streets, parkland, and all new development to provide an additional flood barrier. This part of the project also creates an opportunity to improve pedestrian and bicycle connections for a pedestrian bridge over the Long Island Railroad Bridge, an extension under Long Beach Boulevard, and eventually, eventually a bayfront esplanade leading all the way to Franklin Boulevard. Two areas that present a challenge when it comes to storm or flood mitigation are the West End Bayfront and the Canal Bayfront. In these areas where possible vacant parcels and street ends could be excavated and filled with gravel beds, then recovered with porous services, surfaces to, to the maximum extent possible. This would allow infiltration, subterranean storage capacity, and increased flood protection. So our take on all of this is that it's terrific and the city deserves high marks for reaching out to the public and including multiple points of view in the process. We remain concerned, however, at the prospect of future storms and flooding, particularly in the canals and West End Bayfront, where private homes make public projects challenging at best to undertake. While the solutions we're learning about will help, particularly during high tides, full moons, and low-grade storms, they don't, as far as we can tell, and we're just residents without engineering degrees, but they don't appear to mitigate against major flooding along the lines of Hurricane Sandy. Whereas the beachside berms and groins projects may protect those parts of our island the way similar structures protected Lido Beach and parts of the ocean beachfront homes in the West End. The projects we have heard about might be necessary to protect the north side. And again, we're not engineers, just people who read the paper. But from what we've seen, what would be necessary would be the kind of sea gates we've heard are used in parts of Europe. And we have no idea if such projects are feasible, though they have been discussed, especially in the immediate wake of Hurricane Sandy. Please comment as you see fit. All in all, we do want to say once again that the city and our planners and our officials are doing a commendable job researching, researching, garnering feedback and input and putting together a plan that, while not perfect, is most worthy of attention and support. Want your voice to be heard on these or related issues? There will be a meeting at Magnolia Senior Center on Monday, February 6th at 6.30 p.m. and another on Thursday, February 16th at 7.30 p.m. Look for the city's flyers, which are called, as the meeting is called, Creating Resilience, a Planning Initiative. This is from the unofficial news bureau, aka Facebook. It is rumored that there will be a Costco in Oceanside at the site of Oil City, hence the picture. Something sure going on there. And this Sunday, February 5th, a.k.a. Super Bowl Sunday, at Riverside Boulevard Beach will be the annual Polar Bear Splash, benefiting the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Brr. For details, please visit longbeachpolarbears.org. Also upcoming, on February 8th from 7 to 9 p.m. at the Long Beach Library, there'll be a Sandy Recovery Through Education Forum. So for those of us suffering from FNS, fake news syndrome, here's your chance for some of those, dare we say it, facts to be heard. There will be SBDC workshops at BridgeWorks, a unique and cool facility at the Long Beach side of the bridge to Island Park on Monday, February 6th, on Tuesday, February 7th, 10 a.m. on goal setting and on February 9th, dealing with challenging customers at 6 p.m. This at the Long Beach Library, 
Did you know there's an ARP run free program that will assist you in preparing your taxes? This ARP tax aid program is for residents at least 60 years of age and starts February 7th and runs through April on Tuesdays at 11 a.m. right here at the Long Beach Library. Please check the library's website or give them a call to learn more. See you next time.